Hi, Jay. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on the channel today. Um, you're going to talk about entrepreneurship. Um, now, before we get there, tell us about you. Um, who are you? What's your definition? I, I always ask everybody this, and it's, it's a horrible question to ask, but I think it's useful to to give ourselves a couple of labels here and there. I just say artist or theatre maker these days, but um, yeah. How do you define yourself currently? Um, you're right. It is a it is a horrible question. I hate that when you when you go into auditions and you get blindsided with <laughs> just tell us a bit about yourself, and you're just like, oh, uh, yeah. So my name is Jay Odie. Um, I'm a performer, actor, um, I'd probably say filmmaker creative kind of encompasses uh, what I do. So I do kind of direct and produce and write as well. Um, and I run a production company called, well, co-run a production company called Wolfpack Productions. Okay. Is, is theatre um, one of your main mediums or is film your main medium or are they just seesaw between the two? I would say it, it's definitely gone more towards screen. I would say. Um, so yeah, particularly at the very, very beginning of, of my career and obviously just um, graduating from university, did lots and lots of theatre. And at some point, I think it was around about 2011, 2012, I think, is when I kind of like made the decision to kind of want to concentrate on kind of filmmaking, as it were. So uh, Wolfpack Productions, which we're at at the moment predominantly, is um, screen work, so kind of digital content. But Ironically, funnily enough, we're doing incredible amounts of recording for what should be live performance at the moment, which obviously cannot go on live at the moment. So there is a massive thirst for getting a lot of these kind of live performances recorded now. So it's kind of slightly done a full circle and kind of melded together now, if you were. But um, yeah, um, but screen, I think, is kind of what I predominantly kind of concentrate on. Yeah, having come from like a, a theatre background, yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you balance that? I mean, so if you've got, you have your theatre heritage, as it were, which is still there in the background. You also have a production company. Um, you're, you know, what else are you doing in your life? How, how do you balance all of this? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the critical thing there is, is balance, I think, and it's... Um, through a lot of experimentation, I think through many years, I think to kind of get to the point where I'm at at the moment. Um, I think I was very, I'm very fortunate enough that I do have a day job. I work in a call centre, uh, but where I work has always allowed performers to kind of have that kind of flexibility. Mm. Uh, that's kind of been their USP basically of getting performers so then they can say obviously if we do have last minute castings or auditions or if we do need to go away for a couple of weeks to you know work on something then there's still a job we can come back to so the job I mean I've been there for about seven eight years now I think um, definitely paid my dues um, the work is by far the least stimulating kind of work possible which they kind of know but I always had that mentality right at the very beginning that this is purely here just to pay my rent, to give me the flexibility that I want to be able to go to auditions and kind of book gigs and jobs. And eventually, obviously, once I kind of formed Wolfpack and started doing work for myself and still having that, that flexibility. So the, the point where I kind of find myself at the moment, because I did used to do other jobs as well, things like promo work, uh, which again, you get lots of performers and actors and creatives also doing that work. But I kind of found the way the promo industry works is very, very similar to acting that you kind of need to be on the pulse constantly as well. So you get a phone call or you get emails of there's X amount of jobs. If you're available, we'll book you in. And then I found I was kind of like trying to juggle um, the call center work, promo work, individual auditions castings and also dealing with Wolfpack as well. I think that's when I kind of think maybe three, three, four years ago, I think I kind of gave Prime work up, kind of put that to the side just because that did become too many balls to juggle. So I think I kind of operate at the moment on a kind of three pronged um, attack to what I do with my life. 
I have my kind of day job, which I know it's paying me to live. Um, I still have my acting job as well, which has always been the reason why I'm doing this and working in this industry. And then I've got the Wolfpack Productions as well, which is allowing me to have that autonomy and agency over the kind of work that I kind of want to do. And yeah. trying to blend those three together and keep it going. So I think probably in the last two years, I've kind of found a happy medium and a rhythm where I've got all three in sync. I guess in the moment. I mean, I'd love to still book more acting work, <laughs> but it, it is working in terms of yeah of yeah. prioritizing that. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. In sync is a nice way to describe it because I, I think I found it myself that you go after or you go, well, that works for me, that works for me, that works for me, and then after a couple of years, you go, that doesn't work for me anymore. I need to get rid of that. Yeah, and like you say, to find an equal balance and. You know, in the future, that will probably shift again, right? We'll just go, okay, that now needs to be parked. And also, obviously, we all want to be in situations where we are financially rich to make our decisions, but it, it is a precarious balance. But it, uh, in sync is a really nice uh, takeaway from that. Um, so, so tell us about Wolfpack. Um, what type of company is it? Is it it's a film production company? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've taken you, taken you back to the, the very origins of what it was. So... We started, I think it was 2013. So it was me and my housemate, Chris. Chris is the other um, co-runner of Wolfpack as well. And um, another housemate of ours as well at the time, there's three of us, all of us actors. And I'm sure there's been many people, many flatmates who are all kind of creative at some point go, oh, do you know what? Good idea. Let's, let's just write something and make something together for a bit of fun. So we, me and Chris co-wrote a web series called Outside the Box. It, it was six, three to five minute episodes, um, really just for a bit of fun, I think. Um, an element of, okay, we can kind of write roles that we kind of want to kind of play. Um, it was a sci-fi comedy. We both gravitated towards each other because our love of kind of comedy and kind of niche genres as well and it kind of just grew from from that so we decided we wanted to make a web series and just put it onto youtube again that's kind of like the you know the, the, the done thing youtube is there you can kind of upload whatever you want onto it and then we just decided again off the cuff just to go one step further and started entering into um, web festivals and at the first um, stab, we got into Rain Dance in 2014, I think. So we went to that and then realized and saw the, the scope of the other creative, uh, creators who are also right. producing digital content and web series and people also monetizing off of that as well. And with the hosts and a lot of the, with the festival circuit, um, the speakers they kind of bring in really opened up our eyes to this world of, rather than just doing it for fun, just to kind of give ourselves maybe some footage that we can use as part of the show reel, we kind of want to go down this path and be able to kind of monetize on that. We've got more ideas that we'd like to do. So we just went further with that. So um, it's kind of, pretty much started as a vehicle for web series with digital content. We liked to collaborate um, and using comedy as well as the kind of the, the threads that kind of brings us and the creators we like to work with together. Um, we collaborated with so many amazing, talented, people who are friends and people who came to work with us who have become friends. And a lot of them also then started to also have their own kind of ideas and right. they wanted autonomy over what they want to do. And they would begin to write their own TV pilot or their own web series. And they would yeah. come to us and be kind of like, it'd be great if you guys could also film this for us. And so we've kind of gone from that, that kind of web series to creating lots of kind of pilots and kind of footage and teaser trailers for also other, uh, for other creatives and writers. Mm. So that's the kind of the direction we've kind of have slowly kind of gone through is wanting to eventually kind of knock on the door of kind of like TV and, and start producing you know, bigger um, productions and 
yeah. because of our experience in episodic and, and you know, just um, residual kind of um, shows, the TV just seems to be the, the kind of the medium that we kind of want to. Yeah. Um, you maybe have answered this already, but was this also about having some skin in the game? Here, I understand there's initial instincts of like, I can do this, but now are you at the point, it seems maybe, I don't know how to put words in your mouth, but is it the point where you've gone, I can do this, and now I'm actually going to start to contribute to this kind of world as well? Yeah, I think, I think definitely. I think I can remember very, very early on having discussions with, with Chris, and we met doing um, an independent um, horror, de, uh, horror, horror comedy, sorry. That's how we met. Um, and I think we are, I, I remember early on having a discussion saying we kind of want to do, we kind of know how not to do things now after what we've kind of, through our, our experience. So we kind of feel that, well, we can produce something. Um, so yeah, I definitely think it's a case of kind of, you know, showing to the world of this is what we can do. And certainly up to the point where we have now, we've got quite a lot of experience of, yeah, we can definitely kind of do this. Um, I think initially it was as actors, I think both of us meeting as actors and wanting to create a story that features both of us in, doing comedy, doing kind of what we love. Mm. Um, again, to kind of pull it out there and say, this is what, what we can do. Um, we're not going to wait around necessarily to have to audition and go through the you know the rigmarole of of going through the step-by-step -step process of that that you know we've got the means to kind of do it ourselves yeah. it's strange isn't it because once you actually start to do something you then find yourself in a certain circle and you go actually i kind of know what i'm talking about i i do actually even though i can't always put it into words or put it into mm -hmm. an act i'm I do know what I'm talking about, and I've, and you just need a couple more validations. Yeah. And then you go, huh? Yeah, maybe I did kind of know more than I thought, but yeah, no, definitely. I think um, certainly from even though I think we both kind of um, made the company wanting to kind of promote ourselves as comedy actors and, and produce comedy stories hopefully with us being you know the, the, fo the focus points of it we have both definitely kind of veered off and picked up different skills that we want to continue with for example um chris is a camera operator um director of photography and editor skills that he didn't have at all until we started this company um, I assisted, directed um, a few theatre shows and, uh, and played around with directing with film. But what this gave me was a, a bigger first step. I, I want to learn how to direct more. And again, messing around with writing, it's also wanted me to write more. And I think for us both, neither of us saw ourselves as producers, but we both now have something like seven or eight producing credits under our belts now and it's like oh okay we're, we're, we're producers and we're not quite sure how we actually got here mm -hmm. but certainly i think lockdown for me has really helped cement some of these new skills that i found now of i really kind of want to delve into it and kind of pursue these further mm -hmm. And it's a very interesting when you said about that kind of validation. And so, you know, over the last couple of years, I have done a couple of um, short screenwriting courses. I've done a couple of um, directing courses. And again, I've sat there going, okay, yeah, yeah, I've done this before. Um, that's what I did. And it's kind of like, okay, so I think I, I, I was probably a director, writer, but I just didn't really have that validation or someone else telling me that I was. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so just by doing something, does give you that kind of that that confidence of yeah you can do it you know yeah it's it's giving yourself permission isn't it it's self enablement yeah. and especially in in the arts I think we seem to have this impression we seem to give this impression that there are there are these walls I call them the imagined walls mm -hmm. and actually when you do kind of you know air quote break through them and um, you realise they're not really there they're mostly in your brain which I suspect is probably in all professions at some point but sometimes our professions can seem mm. a little bit elitist um so this this channel has kind of been created to send up a flare to anyone who is in um 
you know, transitional moment or a trough uh, where they, um, you know, maybe they've graduated or maybe they're in secondary school, primary school, who knows, and they're thinking, I don't know where to take this ambition of mine. And so I created the channel to really talk to entrepreneurs, which is why you're in the channel. So if you could send up a few fireworks about entrepreneurship, yeah. what would they be? What do you think would be like, well, okay, there is this, be careful of this. Because let's face it, you and I live in the dream right now. We really are. You know, this is it. This is the dream. It is. It's constant renewal, constant question, constant forensic study of your choices. So what have you learned? I mean, I think, I think number one has to be as soon as you have an idea or, you know, an inkling of, I think I might want to do this, it's just, it sounds a lot far easier than it, than it is doing, but it, it's just, you just need to do it, I think, is, is that's the very first thing. Um, I think myself, I, I guess, learning about my own personality um i'm not which might kind of feed into this kind of entrepreneurial um path that i may have taken is that i don't i don't i don't really see obstacles as obstacles it, it, it's always something to, it's always a hurdle to get over I, i'm probably not um explain myself in, in the most uh, correct way but I've met many many people many creators and many people who are very very successful as well who if there's if this if there's one of those ceilings or one of those walls it's very easy to kind of stop and it's like this you know I'm, my kind of opinion is to try and tackle it as as a puzzle, it, it's something to work out. So that shouldn't stop you from doing whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah. I mean, talking to you now has just made me think back to when I first wanted to um, invest into looking in getting um, actor training, performer training. Because um, so I started slightly later than most of my peers. Uh, I was a couple of years older than uh, most people I went to university with. So I think it was. Uh, maybe early noughties and I think I'd gone through the, the exact same kind of channels of going from school to sixth form and then you're going to go to university and I applied to do um, I can't even remember what course it was to do but I just didn't decide to go so I started working um, I grew up in Bristol and I remember very distinctly there was a period when I was just like I just want to try and see if I can act and I remember going through the yellow pages at the time. There was no Google. <laughs> um, I was trying to find like part-time acting court, um, classes in, in Bristol, and there wasn't anything. But if I had gone to year, uh, to college, which I did do, I did a national diploma, which was only three days a week. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I can allow myself to still work at the place I'm working for a couple of days, and I can still do acting classes, which in essence was a full um, college course. Right. And as cliched as it was, I got the bug and I was like, oh, cool, this is what I want to do. And then I went to university, did a performing arts degree. Then I started kind of, you know, working. And I think I've always kind of wanted to kind of do my own thing as well. I think I've always kind of had this um, I would do whatever it takes, kind of necessary kind of right. attitude, I think, to. To, to what I do. I think I've gone completely off, off track, I think, of uh, the main point I was trying to make, but it was just something that just came to me in terms but of... But that's okay, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, the, I, lo I like the way you said investment. I wanted mm -hmm. to invest in that. I think that's key, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think sometimes we'll, we'll place... Um, debt is a terrible word for an artist. It's investment. I think if we can try to flip that, that actually helps us. But again, it's, it's a case of, like you, like you say, you, you, you take the micro step, don't you? And, and every step is filled with fear. But I think fear is just the unknown, isn't it? And then if you, you, know, you pull back the curtain, then you'll, you'll start to respond yeah. to, to what, what is behind there, and, and off you go. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just going back to the original question of what, what things to kind of look out for in terms of, understanding you know the entrepreneurial world so 
yeah, but first and foremost, I think it's don't let, allow anything to block you or stop you from doing whatever it is. And I think we were speaking earlier, you know, you, you're quite right. I think a lot of people who maybe pre-drama school, even recent graduates are multi-hyphenated creatives is becoming the norm. It, I don't think it's enough just to be just an actor or just the writer, just director. Mm. There's so many artists scrabbling for such little work that we have to be able to kind of create our, our work. So it's almost where I, I don't think it's necessarily a, a, a choice mm. personally. I, I think it, it has to be kind of encompassed. And I think what I've also found as well is that each role feeds into another as well. I mean, even just through when we're on set doing stuff for um, Wolfpack, we could just be doing just a standard kind of filming job, but just recording, we're being commissioned by whoever to do that. Um, so again, me and Chris go in, we do a lot of like kind of setups with kind of the kit. And I could just be just literally just helping out. And again, you're, you're still learning each time about mm -hmm lighting for example and it's like that will come dead handy if, you know when I do my next short film and if I'm directing to understand what those roles are um, I think one mistake I think I made was telling myself that I'm not a producer I'm, I'm just doing this for the sake of doing it but actually no now what I've realized is no I should have embraced the fact that I was actually producing because I, I do now find myself at a point where I seriously consider producing as a route for me to go into what I've enjoyed massively about producing is giving opportunities to other people. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a fantastic thing to do. And it is, it, it does take time. I think another thing I would also say as well, it's not a race. I know it's cliched. It's, you know, it's a continual journey. Yeah. You know, we're, we're never, particularly for actors, it's not, oh, you get your first actor job and then that's it, or you get like a role, um, two-year contract on EastEnders, whatever, and that's it. There, there's always, what's great about being creative and being in the creative circle that we are is learning a lot more about yourself and learning what other people do. And thinking, yeah, that's something that I'd like to do as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's, you, all you're saying is chiming with me as well, because I, I'm, I'm definitely at the point where I want to do that, but I've never done it. I'm going to learn how to do it. I'm going to teach myself how to do it. So I can write screenplays in the final uh, draft now. Um, I use Final Cut Pro to, to edit this channel because I wanted to, you know, yeah. learn how to do it. And then when you learn how to, you're like, oh, I can edit. You know, yeah. I might not be able to edit a huge movie, but, you know, when I found myself in an edit suite two years after I taught myself, I was able to talk to the editor. Yeah. And it was actually a very, it, it was a relief for him because yeah. I was the director of the series and he was like, oh, so, I'm so glad you understand. The, the, the voice edit over the image edit and blah, blah, blah. And he realized the notes because there were details of talk. So it's like, you know, that's the point. And then it's a, it's, a, it's a huge conversation, this, but it seems by artists doing this, by swelling our skill set, will actually make more work for yeah. the industry. And like you said, that, you know, we're all vying for smaller pots, but I, but I did think, actually, I wonder if this is going to make more work because you said yourself you're going to offer work or you're happy to work uh, offer work to people who need it who may yeah. have experience and stuff and you don't need to necessarily because you're you know an indie producer you know your your um your stakes are different but it's good because you know you've already come from the ground up yeah yeah but yeah i actually remember um very early on in my career with my very first agent i think i took a stage managing job i think as a drive a van and drive the set to to the venue and work the, the lighting desk. It was only for a couple of weeks and I think an audition came up and I said to my agent, oh, I can't do it that day, I need some stage management. And she was like, well, you're gonna be an actor, you're gonna be a stage manager. And I was like, well, I wanna be an actor, but you know, this is an opportunity for me to kind of, kind of work. Um, so again, I think it, it's to take it right back again to the original question about the fireworks, what to be aware of as well, I think it, it it's having complete trust in your decisions as well and knowing that what you're doing is the right thing. It might seem like a mistake maybe at that particular point, but going back to what I was saying about it's not a race, it's a continual journey. Those skills 
those decisions that you would make might come back around to definitely serve you in 10 years, 15 years time. There's yeah yeah and, and also listening to your your inner voice it sounds um, quite spiritual but when i look back at pictures of me as a kid or as a teenager it's like yeah it was always in me you could see it was in me except my parents didn't have any clue what to do with it and i had to find my tribe who yeah. then helped shape yeah. it. it's um it's uh yeah and this, this 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 interview now is a little bit of a firework and hopefully somebody will find it go, oh yeah <laughs> okay cool thank you so much jay for talking to me today yeah no worries at all pleasure all right nice to meet you you too all, all right. the best